Hey everyone, I'm with Susan Bond. She's the CEO and president of 42 Entertainment. You were just part of a panel called The Never Ending Online Story. What does that mean to you? Um, well, the never ending online story to me means that uh, the web has given us great opportunities um, to tell stories in different ways and to really have it spill off into the lives of people yeah. um, and create communities that can discuss it and discover it and figure it out in different ways um, and really give the audience a chance to participate <laughs> yeah. in the story. So I think the never-ending online story is just starting to be written in that people are thinking about storytelling for the web in a different way. Yeah, not just with video, I mean gaming in a, in a much bigger picture way and um, you in, a, in many ways are a leader for this. Well, we've been making uh, immersive entertainment and alternate reality games for five years, um, starting with I Love Bees, uh, which we did starting in 2004. And it's really a way to bring people into a world um, that maybe has started in another medium or that you created for a brand and give them a role in it. Uh, and it gives you an opportunity to create conversation. Um, on our panel was Ken Eklund, who did World Without Oil. And he's trying to create a conversation to think about um, you know, the oil crisis and what it might mean to us. Uh, you know, we've created experiences where you think about what the future might be like, and also fun things about what would it be like to be a citizen of Gotham? You know, and what if you get to see Batman? And what if you get to interact with Harvey Dent? Um, so, you know, the, the opportunity to create these worlds uh, and see people get involved in them and, uh, and really have them reach out and touch their lives, I think is, 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 is really exciting. So yeah, that was your latest project, the, a huge one, might I add, Dark Knight. Tell me how that works, like what's the process for you in terms of creating that? Well, when we, when we sit down and start to think about alternate reality games, we always want to come up with a construct that resonates with everyone. So for The Dark Knight, it was pretty easy. It's like, we want to live in Gotham City. We meaning all of us yeah. who love the Batman and love all the, all the things about him. So, um, so it was kind of uh, bringing Gotham City to life. Um, was really the spine of that structure. Um, we also won a Webby this year for uh, Year Zero, which is uh, Trent Reznor's concept album. And that challenge was kind of to bring a vision of the future into today, hmm. and how would you do that? Um, so we, we actually came up with the idea of sending a snapshot of the internet back in time, and then we're kind of digging through it, kind of piecing together, well, what's the world like in the future? And then that kind of makes us think a little bit more seriously about the world that we live in today and not take it for granted. So how many people are we seeing getting involved in these worlds when you launch them? Well, we've been very fortunate to work on projects and properties that have had uh, huge audiences. So Isle of Bees had an audience of about two and a half million. Um, you know, we did a project for Disney's Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men's Chest, and we were able to create an experience that got about four and a half million. Um, Year Zero um, also got over three million participating wow. in that world. And of course, the, uh, the biggest one to date in terms of broad general appeal and appealing to all ages and all quadrants and male and female is The Dark Knight. And we saw over 15 months about 10 million unique players. That's incredible. How, what's the outreach that you do when you launch these? Well, that's kind of interesting because alternate realities really start with a very small rabbit hole that kind of get you into the fiction. So in the case of The, of, of, um, the Dark Knight, we actually used Joker cards that were um, left in comic book stores that had a message from the Joker and that led you to a website and that kind of led you into the world and into the experience. We've used everything from currency to, um, you know, leaving songs on thumb drives and concert venues. So it's that hands-on. It's, it's, I mean, um, that's like very, gr I mean, you, besides having an on, you know, online, you're really going out there creating a concrete well, the, well, connection. Creating physical evidence that these that these alternate realities are are real yeah. is, is very important. Um, uh, you know, and I think that also because of the connective tissue of the web, mm -hmm. only one person has to find it. So, like in the case of Year Zero, um, you know, we embedded clues on a on a T-shirt that you could buy it at the concert, mm -hmm. and that led you to a website. We also left. Uh, a, a new Nine Inch Nail song on a thumb drive in a restroom in a concert venue in Portugal. That random. One, one guy finds it, you know, he uploads it to the web, and of course you go through the 
that's not real, you know, but then once it gets vetted and it is real, people are like, wow, what a great, unusual way to start something. And then they feel a lot of ownership in it. It's like, this is our story. We're going to find out where it goes. What challenges do you face in terms of this industry? Um, I think definitely uh, looking at what, what are ways that we're connecting that are different um, from both traditional storytelling mediums, mm -hmm. but also uh, in, in, in marketing and in advertising and in branded content. You know, how are we making an impression? I think if you look at, we need to, to think about our, our measurements and communicating those in a way that are really co conveying the impact. Um, definitely time spent. Um, the number of, of, of media impressions in terms of online press and buzz and forums and blogs and conversation that's created around something. Mm -hmm. I think we have to figure out a different way of, of thinking about how those relate to both brand perception and, you know, ultimately whether it's, it's product purchase or or butts, you know, butts in the seat. It's like, how, how are the, all those things connecting? Well, yeah, are you competing against the actual official games? That may be like if Batman's releasing an actual video game. Are you, is there a competition sometimes? Uh, no, there's there's not a competition because the world, we're, we're bringing people into the world. Yeah, it's different. Film. So it, I think it's a different experience where we're letting, we're, we're in general yeah. creating enthusiasm for everything it's all connected, to do yeah. with, with uh, the Dark Knight in this case and definitely the world of Batman. What does the future hold for 42 Entertainment? Well, we're continuing to look at ways to do uh, immersive entertainment experiences and alternate reality games. And I think that we've kind of just scratched the surface mm -hmm. in terms of what's possible. Um, you asked a question a minute ago about like, well, uh, you know, how can we expand these things out? I think that there is a demand from, from the public. Um, both for their entertainment properties, but also for their brands and even for their causes. It's like, you know, getting involved in a more active way. I think the world's much more connected, and there's much more of a possibility of of you somehow getting involved in something, yeah. whether it's online or through your mobile device or, you know, through email or through physically going out and participating in an event. Um, and I think, you know, entertainment is a great draw. It's a pull experience. It's like, we're having fun. Come play with us. Um. Yeah. So projects that you're working on, you want to give us a little hint at what we can expect? I could tell you, but you know, then I have to kill you. <gasps> that sounds really intense. But I kind of want the information. Now go to projectabraham.com. Projectabraham.com. Hmm, will do. There you go, everyone out there, projectabraham.com. All right, lastly, some fun Q&A. When do you think we're going to be able to vote online? Well, coincidentally, uh, we already had an election online. Uh, we actually held a vote for District Attorney of Gotham City, and Harvey Dent won. Wow. Players were able to vote online. Maybe the real government can take some clues from you. Maybe you'll create that. Coincidentally, he won by a landslide. <laughs> Very good. What's your favorite viral video? Um, that's a great question. I loved Dr. Horrible's sing along. Yes. Blog. I thought that was I thought that was great. I really loved the characters. I loved the whole story. I thought there was kind of a sweetness to it, even though I know it was all evil. Um, but you know, I really like that. What sites do you go to every day? I, like I guess the rest of America, am obsessed with the election, so I'm definitely going to um, news sites and outlets and uh, political blogs. Um, and I also love to, um, you know, uh, read the forums and read what our players are saying. So one site? I'm not going to give <gasps> Oh, the mysterious Susan Bonds. Oh Thank you so much. Thank you. Looking forward to much more. Keep it on webbyconnect.com.